suffering. It will be today's subject. hot topic and these words that I'm going to say about suffering they are for the seeker of truth only if you're not a seeker of truth they will make there will be no point in trying to use these words because it will not work and you will understand why I'm saying this you see suffering is the great addiction it is an addiction and uh, if the seeker of truth doesn't treat this as an addiction he will not be able to break its bounds you see suffering is at the basis of human life at the core of human life what you think you are in this moment this body mind complex is based on suffering and suffering um, is a part of your identity and for you in in a way suffering is suffering it has no connection with circumstances but as you look for happiness in circumstances or you seem to be looking for happiness in circumstances so it is with suffering so this individual has learned to get his suffering from certain circumstances so he has the need the deep need to recreate these circumstances so that he can guarantee his suffering Yes, it seems strange because what it seems is that everybody is looking for happiness. So now I'm telling you that you are looking for suffering. But if you imagine, if you see, you will see that when things are very good, there is a certain suspicion about things somewhere deep down. But when things are bad, when you're in suffering, there's a haha -ha to that. It's like the cycle has closed in the way as it should. And it is like this, as it should, you see? Because these are your real expectations about life. So, it is a matter of survival, a matter of feeling safe that things go to the same point every time. So the majority of you, human life is a quest for suffering. It is suffering based. And this is not a problem, but I will speak about this later. It is suffering based. So it seems that you're really going after happiness, but it isn't, you see? And the big mother, the big mother of suffering is hope. Yes. And they say hope is the last one to die. And this gives us hope that eventually it dies and this when it dies this is when uh, freedom from suffering can become a possibility not an end in itself it isn't it's uh, only for breaking the ties that bond you to to this to illusion to nature to existence So it seems that it is a, a universe, life presents itself full of opportunities, that you are going towards happiness, but it isn't. There's nothing new, it's quite mechanical, human life. There is a constant motion to recreate 
those circumstances that bring you suffering. Suffering will be the last, last thing to let go. And these words are for the seeker of truth or the one who is trying to establish himself sincerely in the quest for truth. What you're looking for is, is the most terrifying thing for you. Your survival instincts make sure that you guarantee your suffering because it is about the survival of identity, which is suffering based. And if you don't know this, if you don't know that suffering is an addiction and it has to be treated this way, you cannot uh, escape from it. If all the suffering was removed from your life at the same time, it would become unbearable. For those of you who deal with other people, like therapists and all of this, you have seen if you push someone with knowledge, understanding, energy and all the support you can give it. For a time, you, may, you see it uh, coming out from its suffering. And as you let go, now you have uh, your own feet to walk. Hmm? Or eventually, even if you're still there, you will see it going back again to the same point, or even worse, sometimes it has to be worse, to compensate. You see? And the first impulse is to help, to take it again back to a place where it's not experiencing that suffering. But why the person went back again to that point of suffering? Because that is where she wants to be. She doesn't know that, but it is. And it will be very difficult for you to relinquish your suffering, your sources of suffering. And this is why behavioral patterns and all of this, they are difficult to let go. Because at the end, it guarantees suffering. And this is feeding the apparent identity. The mistaken identity, this little you, it is suffering based. For most of you, this seems nonsense, but for some of you that went through these thick layers that have really pushed into yourselves, trying to gain distance from all these impressions that arise, these pullings towards investments, you will see. Suffering is precious. I have seen many of you that come to me and crying, completely desperate and saying, I cannot stand this anymore. And I look at you and I see, unfortunately, yes, you can stand it much more. You need it much more. There's nothing even I can say. To some, I can speak. To the majority, there is absolutely no point. Later I will explain why there is no point. So wherever you go, if you go into this... Uh, if your focus is still in the, 
in the worldly activities or if it, your focus is in spiritual activities, in freedom. And for example, you go somewhere into a spiritual place and you dedicate yourself to this and you will see that behind this comes always the person. It comes to a new environment. You start to recreate the same relationships you had. The persons you will meet, you will transform someone in the mother, another in the father, another into this, another into that. And you'll recreate your own personal theater where you can experience these um, sufferings, different sufferings. And how come there's a, a, a how does this connect? You see, life suffering based. In the apparent beginning, as suffering is being experienced and this uh, personality is arising, deep beliefs are ingrained about lack of self-worth. I don't want to go too much into detail because it would be a long conversation and change the direction of the subject. But um, the beliefs you carry about yourself, the deep beliefs, this needs constant food because they don't have a value uh, by themselves. But with this suffering experience, hmm? uh, who comes first, this is a, well, okay. These deep beliefs about yourself, they are the motor, the engine of your life. And they are suffering based. You see? Uh, you, have under, you have seen this in relation to others, that sometimes you are uh, saying one thing, making a comment or something with one intention and the other gets hurt intensely and fights back, reacts in an unexpected way without any... Uh, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't because your intentions were different. So the reaction seems to be without any sense. But your words have touched the other one in a particular way that has nothing to do with you. It's her own world. This is what she wants to see. She wants to see these words coming out of your mouth. She wants to interpret it. She needs to interpret it in this way. The wounds are there. So whatever you're saying uh, it is always about uh, rejection, uh, rejection, rejection, rejection. Yeah, the, uh, there's not, not much going around here. And rejection because you're not good enough. So criticizing is rejection. Everything is and comes back to the point where you're not good enough. This is what you really believe. You not, not, it's not about others, it is never about anyone else. And what is, what does the one who has no value, who is not good enough, what does this one deserve apart from suffering? This is your deep belief, one of the deepest and the motor of life. You dream, you dream of happiness, of freedom from this suffering, but it is important as oxygen. When you Put this into your head, really, and understand this principle that all your investments 
have been for suffering, it will make sense. And then you will have a real chance to break these chains. A real chance, but it is very difficult. And I'm not telling you this so that you lose your... Uh, hmm. It's for you to have a notion of that which lies ahead. Don't take this lightly. Suffering will be the last thing you will let go. It is the most precious one. Love, real love, happiness, truth, bliss, wholeness, not for you. And this is the most scary. These things are quite scary. It is nice to pursue them, to keep them far away. And you will see by looking at your images of happiness, the things you're fighting for. And you'll see worldly or apparently spiritual, you are always pushing them further away. As you seem to be getting closer to having everything there that you believe will bring you happiness, you will add a few more items to make it go a little bit away. And you will remember certain moments, not once, not twice, but often, where you got close to something you knew it would bring you happiness. You, in your own childish expectations, of course, but whatever. And you got scared and diverted your eyes. It is scary. Suffering, by the other hand, it is difficult, hard, but it is known. It is safe in a very twisted way. It is precious. And this need to get away from suffering, this is what keeps the cycle of human normal life. From desperation to hope, from hope to desperation. Desperation to hope, hope, desperation. And this is how. Next time it will be better. What does this mean better? These ideas that I carry about happiness, these images, these circumstances will be there and then I'll be happy. The first step to break the chains of suffering is to understand it is an addiction to very deep levels. It is about identity. It is about the preservation of your world, of your illusion. And it doesn't matter whoever you are having a relationship. You will transform that individual into a character to adapt to your play. It's kind of crazy, very crazy. Very, very crazy. You can only understand this and see these things in, in play when you have done a lot of work, inner work, when you have matured a little bit. And if you had, if you have matured a little bit and you had the experience to be in the middle of other seekers of truth, really seekers of truth, you will see this at play 
and both you and the other one will be uh, working their own things instead of going to the other and trying to solve it outside. But still, with all this notion, with this vision, it will be very difficult. Not impossible, of course not, but difficult. So just running towards the sunset, riding towards the sunset, without a notion of what is there, makes no sense. What I call the worldly person is someone who is still maturing a lot of things, experiencing a lot of things. It's not a depreciation. And in this stage, there's no point speaking about this. Or maybe it will try to be transformed into some kind of a therapy, but I will go to this later. And with it, it is of no use. If you still want things from this world, anything from this world, you'll continue to be compelled towards suffering. The happiness of this world is masked suffering. Circumstantial happiness is suffering. Even if it is by the greatest facts of all. You don't know who you are. Only this. Only this or this. Whatever is the root of all suffering. But from what, where you can see now in circumstances, and why is this always happening to me, and why like this? Because you need it to be like this. And without these cycles from hope to despair, suffering would not cause an impact. See, it's like a drug. You have to increase the dosage or else. So it has to change. See, you have to go to go to the deepest. Go to the, the, the deep down. You have to come to the highest point also, because only after a big dosage of fun and entertainment and Happiness is a big word, but okay, human happiness. Then, when, if suffering comes, and it will come, but only after this, it can cause a big impact. <clears throat> People who have a life of circumstantial uh, suffering, you see, their lives are a nightmare. In, in, in terms of uh, life conditions and uh, relationships, like uh, a lot of violence and abuse, their sensitivity to suffering is much lower. But they too are in an epic of suffering. But you can see different individuals. You will see different sensibilities suffering and according to this you will look at their epics and their stories you see one has to break one leg the other has to break a fingernail for example for the same amount of intense pain and when you're in the the upper part of the cycle the happy cycle the happy go-go there is a suspicion, a suspicion inside. This, ah, this will not last, or something wrong will happen. It's not a suspicion, it's a, an expectation. But when you go to the deep of the well, then there's a, haha, I knew it. And with this, a relief.
observe. Without knowing this, there is no way you can break this dependence, this addiction. But if you're not a seeker of truth, impossible. So whatever you are, whatever you are doing, you are just maturing to the point to get to this understanding. Because there's no worldly seeker or well-being seeker, just, just truth seekers. In different levels of understanding. Whatever that means also. Without suffering your goals, your dreams, your dreams are your hopes, are your sufferings. If you don't go to these deep beliefs about yourself and see that all these investments trying to prove others that you are worthy, that you are good, that you are special, it is never about others. You're trying to show this to others so that others gives you a feedback that can counter the beliefs you have about yourself. And it doesn't work. One million will say that you are special. One will say that you are nothing. And this will be the one that will touch you. The others will continue to be with suspicion. But this one will touch you. Because this one is giving the same opinion you have about yourself that which you're really believing. And all these, uh, the need to feel prettier, the need to uh, be nice, you are countering deep beliefs you have about yourself. You have is a very strong, but it seems to be like this. Let's say that are there, whatever that means. So, it has nothing to do with the world. Absolutely nothing. And all your investments, the majority of you, you can say that you are working for yourself, you can say that you are working to improve the world, but it has nothing to do with this. It's about guaranteeing suffering. All these dreams of uh, circumstances towards happiness, relationships, maternities, uh, families, um, work, uh, possessions and all of this, it's about the sadnesses that you carry those deep beliefs that you have about yourself. And these are like salvation. They are quite physiological in nature. Mechanical. Completely mechanical. And these dreams are guaranteeing your amount of suffering. This is how you're using this. With the spiritual knowledge about the spiritual laws, to an extent, by knowing these laws and living through these philosophies, the, these grossest sufferings, they tend to disappear. But the deep core will remain. You will continue to get this intensely. And this 
this knowledge of these uh, of this way of living has created a persona a spiritual persona that has become more smooth towards the contact with others and has pushed this into the most intimate relations you see socially very nice Intimately, when things become intimate, it becomes intense and explodes. It doesn't matter how much you try. This is for a seeker of truth only. That means that wants nothing else from this. You see, he's not looking for God to improve his life. He is looking for God to become one with Him. He is looking for the source to dissolve in it, not to have a better dream. If you're addicted to the dream, you're addicted to suffering. There's no separation. So the best dreams you have they are suffering based. They are based on the convictions you carry about yourself and the visions you have about the world. Nothing new, nothing fancy. Just this. Without knowing that it is an addiction, impossible. If you know if you can see this, not just because it was said now, but if you can look into yourself and see this, you will start recognizing the patterns, the investments, and what they hold behind, and why things happen the way they do. Then it will be easier, easier but not easy, to stop these investments, to cut these investments. Because these beliefs here are very strong about circumstantial happiness. This is how Maya makes you continue to be deluded and engaging, engaging in her story. Abstracting from suffering from investing in circumstances that bring suffering. It is intense. And you will see how everything there will be fighting to push you back to your suffering sources. And it will uh, win a lot of battles, a lot of them. And you will conquer small ones first, and you will lose, then just a little bit, and you will lose, 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 lose. But if you have focus and determination, you will succeed. It's unavoidable. Unavoidable. If you ignore and you just take these uh, uh, new ways of life, and take spirituality as a way of improving human life, you'll just be fooling yourself and continue the same way. For Mother Nature, for Maya, makes no difference if you think you're smart or if you're dumb, as long as you're complying. In the end, you are your own joke. It is like this for all. She will only release you when you have shown that you have what it takes. And no point in pleading. It has a point, but not much, because you are greatness. So why are you lowering like this? But as you see yourself as something small, lowering is a need. You see, the humble ones are picked up from the ground by the divine 
and taken you to the highest spheres. The proud ones take the stick into their heads, are, their heads are put down into the ground so that they can gain life, gain this humbleness and be able to really go up, not to a castle of clouds of suffering. Look around, not to others, but what you call your life and your investments, and see for yourself. In the next uh, video, I will speak about suffering as the releaser.